Hi guys, James from Measure Square here. Welcome to part 3 of our Product and Services Database tutorial in the Getting Started series for Measure Square 8. In this video, we will cover Area Item Setup. To get going with our Area Item Setup, we'll start off by making a pattern carpet. To begin, we'll go up to our Pattern Match folder, right click, and select New Product. You'll see we have our new product pop up here, so we'll go ahead and enter in a pattern carpet name. We'll choose the type as carpet, and then we'll click OK. This will show us our item detail view here on the right hand side. In this area, we can choose our color, our unit of measure, in this case square yards, and enter in other information such as vendor, manufacturer, and so on. In the estimating info section, we can enter in the roll width, estimating width, and roll length. We'll leave these as is for a default. Since we're working with a pattern carpet, we'll want to pay special attention to the horizontal repeat and vertical repeat fields. We'll go ahead and enter in our horizontal repeat information now. Once we have the horizontal repeat information entered in, we'll go ahead and click here on vertical repeat and do the same. Note that if we're making other roll goods such as a sheet vinyl or a non-pattern carpet, this area will look very similar, just minus the repeat fields. If we'd like to enter in any pricing information, we can do so in our pricing info section. For example, we can click here on the square yard sales price and enter in a price per square yard. We can also enter in our cost price per square yard below. If we'd like to enter in a freight price or labor price, we can do so as well. Once we've entered in our pricing information, we can go ahead and click Save, and we'll see that we now have our new pattern carpet located in the correct folder. Now that we've made a roll good, let's walk through making a tile. First, we'll go ahead and expand our tile folder, and then, in our case, we'll choose the floor tile folder here. We can then left click to highlight the floor tile folder blue, and then click on the plus icon to make a new item. We'll go ahead and enter in a product name. We'll now choose our type. In this case, we'll choose tile. Note, we can also choose carpet tile or vinyl tile if needed. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we're presented with the same item details view on the right hand side. In this way, we can go in and change our tiles display color the unit of measure for the tile, and our sizing. While we're in our ceramic tile details, let's go ahead and set up a waste. When we're just getting started with Measure Square 8, we recommend using the waste add-on method here. In this way, we can put in a simple percentage over the net area that we'd like to add to our product quantity. So let's say 5% waste for our ceramic tile too. For ceramic tile, it's important to calculate our pricing by the box since that's how we buy our product. To do this, we'll go down to the bottom right here and click on the sell by box, and then we'll make sure to say how many square feet come in a box. For example, we'll say 20 feet. Once we have our square foot per box set up, let's set up a box sales price and a box cost price. Click Save. Now that we've made a roll good and a tile, let's walk through making a hardwood product. We'll scroll down into our database, we'll expand our wood folder, and we'll choose the appropriate subfolder. Let's make a pre-finished engineered wood item. We'll left click on the wood folder and click on the new product button. Just like before, we'll enter in a name or SKU and then we'll choose our type. For the type, let's go ahead and choose hardwood. If we're using a laminate plank, we can also choose the laminate type located below. 
Just like before, you'll see we have our item info section where we can choose our display color, enter in our manufacturer information, but you'll see the plank area is set up a little differently. We can set up our plank width, like so. We can even enter in the length of our planks. So if we're working with, say, a 24-foot plank, we can leave that alone. Or we could, say, reference that it's an 8-foot plank. Once our hardwood plank estimating information is entered in, we can then work with pricing. Just like with tile, if we need to sell the product by box, we can simply say sell by and enter in the square feet covered per box. And then we can enter in our box sales price and our box cost price. We'll then click the Save button. In our next video in the Getting Started series, we'll cover linear product setup.